hug. Family gardening time wasn't going exactly as planned, but then again, nothing in Steven's life ever went as planned, so it was fitting in with the other events pretty well. Dad, Stephanie's cheating! Dad, <laughs> he felt like he'd never get used to hearing that. It was a good unused to this feeling, one of glittering joy and success and pride, knowing everything that the title implied. That his life was going well enough to allow not only him and Connie to grow comfortable around each other again, but to also let them get married and have children together. Stephen looked up from where he was crouched, staring across the small garden that they were beginning to see a familiar scene. Crystal pointing accusingly at Stephanie, her young face red. What did she do? Stephen asked curiously. Crystal thinks I somehow stole your spit and used it to grow my plant faster, Stephanie explained with a sigh before Crystal could open her mouth. Crystal puffed up her cheeks and said crossly, "'Cause you did!' She began to explain with dramatic intensity. "'Stephanie snuck up in the middle of the night and stole Dad's spit and dunked it under her seeds, and now they're growing and mine's not, and it's not fair!' Stephen hit a chuckle as Stephanie rolled her eyes at the story. He didn't want to make the feistiest daughter that they had even more worked up. He looked down at his youngest, who he had been helping, and said, "'Okay, they need my help. Do you think you'll be okay over here, Gregory?' Gregory nodded, curly ponytail bouncing. Yeah, I got this. He dug a few more scoops of the hole that they were making for his plant to move it into the ground out of its pot. His was already about four inches tall, a morning glory, healthier than his two sisters. Gregory had the greenest thumb out of the siblings so far. Stephen got up and circled around to his daughters to examine their plants. The sisters had both picked sunflowers, but Stephanie's was the only one that was pushing its little green specks above the surface. Crystal's was nowhere to be found. Stephanie beamed proudly as she watched her dad examine hers. She said, I grew it all on my own. I didn't use your spit, I used my spit. Crystal is just jealous because I'm magic. Stephen frowned slightly at that, shaking his head. Oh, sorry, Stephanie, but you're not magic, remember? Oh, what? Stephanie whined. Stephen sighed. But that's good, okay? You're just good at gardening. No freaky diamond powers required. Even though Stephanie seemed disappointed to be reminded of her humanity, Stephen reviewed the same grateful reassurance that none of his children would have to deal with magic stuff. The first most relieving moment of his life was whenever Stephanie was born, healthy and alive and perfect, not deformed or dead because of his diamond heritage, just a blessedly normal human baby. Screaming and crying, of course, but alive. His second most relieving moment was whenever he'd been able to confirm, through several tests and a check or two from Garnet's future vision, that none of his children had inherited his troublesome powers. He knew that the kids were disappointed to hear that they didn't have cool magic like their dad, and still hoped to somehow have it anyway, but Stephen had been so happy that he'd felt like he could leap to the moon in a single bound. He'd already learned what burdens came from powers like this, and he'd been worried that his kids would have to go through the same pain that he'd gone through. But they didn't have to. He and Connie had three children together, Stephanie, Crystal, and Gregory. Stephanie was their firstborn, and ironically resembled a young version of Stevani, which earned her similar name. She had their fusion's tanned skin, ebony springs of curly hair, and dark, sparkling eyes. She packed a lot of cheerful spirit, gaining her mother's wit and her father's caring. Crystal was their middle child, pumped with an endless energy. She was more like Connie, with chocolate dark skin and bouncy black hair, cut short. Crystal's name came to them as they realized that they wanted to name a child after one of Stephen's gem relatives, but it was unfair to pick just one. Instead, they just settled on Crystal for all of the Crystal gems. Gregory was their youngest, one last surprise after the handful that was Crystal. He looked more like Stephen, with lighter skin and curly hair, even growing it out and tying it into a little bud of a ponytail, like Stephen had begun to do over the years. Gregory was obviously named after Greg, Stephen's father. Their only son was quiet and respectful, enjoying singing and painting sunsets and planting flowers. Gregory was actually where this family gardening time idea had come from. He'd already been planting in this small garden before his sister swooped in to attempt to replicate their little brother's talent. Stephen watched Crystal call Stephanie a clod, a word that Peridot had wasted no time teaching his children, while Stephanie giggled and hid behind Lion. The big pink animal had been lounging in the grass, but was now woken up from his nap as Stebony and Crystal chased each other around him, their laughter filling Stephen's chest with warmth as he shook his head, sighing. Lion, get her! Crystal ordered, pointing. Lion only yawned and set his chin back on his folded paws, ears flicking. Crystal's cheeks puffed up again, and she continued to try and order the big pink animal to attack while Stebony giggled endlessly. Why exactly did you think that family gardening time would be a good idea? He glanced over to see Connie approaching. She had grown up just as Stephen had, and in Stephen's opinion was just as beautiful as she had always been. Her night-dark eyes were amused, watching their children play. 
What? Well, it, it totally is, Stephen said in disbelief. Look at them. The parents watched as Crystal and Stebony used Lion as a shield, darting left, then right, an equal distance away, the word Claude being used excessively. Gregory was humming, ignoring his sister's scuffle as he set up the support for his vine-like plant. They're having fun, Stephen nodded approvingly. <laughs> Connie chuckled and pecked an affectionate kiss on his cheek, and he felt himself blushing with the same goofy smile that he wore every time that she did that, even if it was the millionth time. Over the years, Connie and Stephen had slowly worked their way to being comfortable together until they decided to continue officially dating again, all the way up until Connie proposed to him. Stephen hadn't dared to do it himself, knowing what happened last time, and maybe that was what Connie realized, that she had to make the move. He wasn't going to pressure her into marriage, but once he had it confirmed from her proposal that she was ready this time, he was overjoyed to permanently add her to his life. Stephen and Connie's children had strange but safe lives. On one side, they were normal humans, so they went to school and did homework and played video games, just like any other kids. On the other side, however, their dad was the savior of the galaxy, a hybrid with a magic rock in his belly button, a dad who had little thorn-sized horns barely hidden beneath his long curls of hair. Stephen's corruption scars had reduced a lot, but it seemed clear that they were never going to go away completely. Luckily, now he only had scarce traces of dark pink scales. A few flicked around his gem, and there was a thicker, more stubborn patch on his back. But it was still so much more than he'd ever dared to hope for. His children had asked a few times why he had scales and horns, and so far, Stephen and Connie had watered down the story. As far as his children knew, Stephen's scales were from scars from some battle against an unnamed bad guy. They promised to tell them more once they were older. Stephen didn't want his children to think of him as a former insane Godzilla monster. Anyway, Stephen's connection to the gem world meant that the gem world would always have a connection to his kids, powers or no powers. Stephanie, Crystal, and Gregory were visited frequently by their legion of magic gem ants. Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, Lapis, Bismuth, and Peridot adored Stephen and Connie's children. Amethyst was a rowdy, fun ant who had let them eat all the sweets that they wanted, and they knew it. They got into all sorts of trouble with her, especially with her shape-shifting abilities. Their favorite was Amethyst's impression of their dad, which Stephen loudly objected definitely did not sound like him at all. Pearl was the most responsible babysitter. The kids loved asking her to make movies with her holographic projections, especially whenever they told her sillier versions of how those films had really played out. Stephen had once caught the kids convincing Pearl that Darth Vader had most certainly made a conga line out of his stormtroopers at the end of the movie. Garnet amazed them to no end, being a permafusion. They'd pummel her with questions about the future, and Garnet gained a hobby of trying to find the strangest, most unlikely future and to report it to them as a sort of game to see how crazy the day could go. Bismuth let them help in her shop with less dangerous chores and was a gold mine of war stories for the fight for Earth's freedom. The kids would listen to her tell heroic tales for hours, seeming completely lost in their imaginations as Bismuth recounted secret missions and surprise attacks in ways that they'd rat out spies through the thousands of years that they fought. The kids seemed to think that the trio of Lazulis was their personal flightmobiles. One water-winged gem for each kid meant that Lapis, Curly, and Freckles could carry them on their backs and do complicated tricks and flips in the sky while the children shrieked in delight. The three were doing well together. Curly seemed to be adapting to a calmer lifestyle, Freckles was the life and cheer of them all, and Stephen had never seen Lapis happier with the other two's security. Peridot was just as fascinated with them as they were of her. The little lime gem was hardly able to wrap her head around how Stephen and Connie managed to create three tiny versions of themselves. She always called them Stephen's offspring, which the kids found hilarious. He and Connie brought the kids to Homeworld every once in a while, where Spinel and Volleyball would eagerly meet them. Spinel was beloved by the kids. She was, of course, created for matching their childish energy. She was a natural at their play, and they'd always be thrilled to hear that they were going to visit Aunt Spinny for the weekend. Volleyball would have fun with them, too, though she specialized more with the quieter Gregory, while Spinel handled Stebony and Crystal's hyperactivity. Gregory and Volleyball shared the same floral appreciation, and her calmer pace more closely matched his. Stephen was always wary around the diamonds. Seeing the ginormous monarch so close to his delicate children always made his skin crawl, his gem's heat readying a shield. He knew, logically, that they would never do anything to hurt them. The diamonds adored Stephen's organic offspring. They were gentle and polite and aware of how nervous they made him, but he guessed that he'd never be able to make the instinctual uneasiness go away. It had been embedded into him too deeply at too young of an age. It was much better than it had been before whenever just thinking of them could trigger a panic attack, but it would never truly disappear. At least it was manageable now. 
Showing the diamonds their great-great-grandchildren at all was proof of the cushion of trust that had built up over time. Their odd little family lived in a town near the beach with a few other families in the pot of the neighborhood that they'd taken over. Emma and her wife had moved in close by, as well as two other friends that he'd gotten to know in college, Josh and Thomas. The friend group seemed to stick together around each other better, so they'd all moved into houses near the others and made a patch of the neighborhood there so they could share resources during hard times and help support each other whenever one of them was in need. They weren't as conveniently close to the beach as before, but it was still enough to drive out on free weekends so the kids could chase the waves, build sand castles, and compare seashells while Stephen and Connie got to sit down, talk, watch them play, and occasionally get dragged into some new game of theirs. Stephen had gotten his job as a therapist, just as he planned, working with both humans and gems, helping them with their problems and leading them to happier lives. Connie was an engineer for a nearby spacecraft building facility, where the gems helped humans gradually catch up on all their technological enhancements without the change being too jarring. It was a good, peaceful life. Despite the family pet being a lion, despite the kid's father having scales here and there, despite all the most frequently visiting relatives being living space rocks, Stephen's life felt more normal, more content, more full than it's ever been before. He couldn't believe that he had ever wanted to end it, and was eternally grateful of Connie's actions, dragging him to the surface, forcing him to breathe again, to not give in. His new life felt like retirement, even though he was still technically working. He was retired from his gem life, the job of being Steven Universe, savior of the galaxy, and resigning to just be dad now. He was done being a gem. Now he got to be a human. Stephen stood with Connie, watching Gregory walking over to his sisters, sitting down with them and explaining how to save Crystal's flower as Lion watched. They giggled and wrestled and lived, carefree as Stephen should have been at their age. He was so happy that he was able to provide them with the childhood that he never had. You're right, Connie murmured, her head leaned on his shoulder. They do look like they're having fun. Stephen smiled to himself, letting his hand become comfortably intertwined with hers. Connie's was darker, rough and warm in the color of chocolate pudding, interlocked with his bigger, pale peach fingers. His hand was the normal, natural color of his flesh, as they'd been for a long time. Stephen couldn't remember the last time that he had glowed. doing why am i doing this holy angel music yay Woo! i'm done ah! oh my gosh oh my goodness ah! i just finished voice acting the last episode frick yeah It's, it's April. I started in March. 
It's like 13 months, I think. Oh, 13, my favorite number. How did that happen? Oh, 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 I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh, never do this. I'm just telling you, if you're planning to do this, don't do this. <laughs> I'm gonna go lie down. <laughs>